I platinum GTA 5 in 2023 after almost 10 years. Wow. With so many things you need to do, the will to platinum this generational game is a little overwhelming. It's going to take a while, so here are a few tips to make that journey to the platinum trophy a little easier and more enjoyable. I've picked the most difficult and time consuming trophies to focus on, and it's best to work on these simultaneously with others, so definitely focus on those. I've also divided the trophies into two parts, the single player story and the multiplayer. So let's start with the single player. A quick heads up if you're starting from scratch, do not do Lester's assassination missions until after you finish the story. I'll tell you why when we get to that, but it makes a few trophies a lot easier. Firstly, make sure you pick option C when you're near the end of the game, because if you don't, you will be locked out of trophies that have to start over. You will have to 100% complete the game, so that means a ton of collectibles and side missions to do. From stunt jumps to spaceship parts, parachute jumps, flights under the bridge, nuclear waste, knife flights, and letter scraps. These are all necessary to be found, so I used an interactive map that I have linked in the description below that was really useful to track collectibles. A tip for the night flight specifically is to start the third flight school mission. When you're in this mission you can still do the night flights, but it really helps that if you then inevitably crash, which you simply will do, you restart on the runway, and this really helped me out. In total, there is well over 200 collectibles and various other things you need to do, and there's no easy way around it, you just have to do it. Just do it! Before we go and talk about Lester, there's a ton of miscellaneous trophies you need to do. Some of those you may have already unlocked naturally, whilst others will require you to go out of your way. Hobbies and pastimes is an easy and fun one. If you've already done a few of these, you are already doing great. This requires you to get a gold medal in each of the individual pastime activities and races. Easy. These are the shooting range, flight school, sea race, street race, off-road race and the triathlon. To stop any confusion you may have, you only need one gold medal in the shooting range and the flight school, but it's best to do all of them anyway as you still need to do them. Okay. Then we also have things like golf, tennis, darts and various other side activities you have to do alone, and once with another of the characters for a separate trophy. You also need to deliver an unsuspecting victim to the outcast cult located in the mountains. Since there are only 10 of these people that spawn anywhere when you're playing as Trevor, make sure to do this at least once before it becomes a missable trophy. Other miscellaneous trophies are for winning the Arms Race with Trevor, which is simply buying the Mackenzie Field Hanger and doing 10 of those missions, which is a few flights and driving around Blaine County and that's all that's needed, and also for buying the Downtown Cab Co with Franklin. You have to complete a private fair and this one is slightly buggy so be aware. For me this took several attempts before I finally got the call for a fair, but after doing the tow truck missions with Tonya it eventually came up, so you may want to try that. And of course there's also the whole Kiflom crazies. Kiflom. This is a whole experience on its own, so I suggest taking a look at a specific guide when doing this. All you need to know is that this takes much longer than you expect. It's extremely tedious, so you may want to spread this out. We also have a trophy for surviving 3 minutes on a 3 star wanted level together with the whole squad. So make sure you get Franklin, Michael and Trevor all together at the same place. And then an easy way to get this trophy is to simply drive up to the airport and drive around for 3 minutes. Since you automatically get 3 stars when entering the airport, this is really easy, but it's also a really fun platinum trophy screenshot if you like those things. Before we tackle the most difficult trophies and the multiplayer part, let's take a look at those Leicester assassination missions. As I mentioned, it's best to do this after completing the main story as you will have a lot more money to invest. Because this ties in with the trophies, a lot of cheddar and trading pure alpha, if you invest in the right companies before you start the mission, you can literally become a billionaire with all 3 characters. You get the trophies naturally by spending 200 million in investments alone, and then making a profit as well. Check out a guide to see which ones are smart to invest in, then sell them when their profits are up after a few in-game days. I chose to sleep and save my game to speed up the time, which was really annoying but worth it at the end. Next are the gold medals. Unlike the gold medals in Red Dead Redemption 2, this is a lot easier, simply because the requirements you met on previous attempts actually carry over, nice. meaning that you can attempt each requirement individually on different runs and still get a gold medal. This is great because some of those are really difficult. I chose to do the easiest one listed on PSM profiles by a guide made by Trozenator, which resulted in me being quite surprised as to how quickly I actually got the trophy. You should already have around 15 to 20 gold medals from the main story and strategy of freak missions, and especially the former, some of those missions literally take no time and effort at all. So take a look at the guide in the description below to focus on the easy and quick ones. Now let's go over those multiplayer trophies, because the one that puts most people off that have never played online is either reaching level 100 or the numero uno trophy. As someone who actually rarely played GTA Online over the years, I had to grind from level 27 up to level 100. 
This was something that I was absolutely dreading, but after a few days I really got into it and I thoroughly enjoyed it, which was quite surprising given how everyone reviews the game. A few tips to speed up this process is to work on the new Uno trophy simultaneously, which I'll touch on more expansively in a second, but it's good to focus on the businesses and double XP game modes as these can really help. The businesses are great for a massive influx of money and RP every so often, <laughs> whilst the races and other game modes are great fun and can really ramp up your gains in a short amount of time. If you're going to buy any of the businesses, definitely purchase the nightclub as one of your first, as this facility makes so much money and RP with very little effort. And also make sure you at least try and enjoy the online at least somewhat, as otherwise it's going to feel like it's taking forever. Now for the Numero Uno trophy specifically, where you have to win in each game mode, you may want to boost this. I know, I know, but it's nearly impossible otherwise. I set up a group of PSN profiles and found three others willing to attend this trophy. Because you can do the majority within a duo, that's easily done and should be no problem. But the difficulty comes together with the trophy backseat driver, and this requires you to win a rally race as co-driver. I had to do this with the group, because absolutely nobody joins a rally race lobby let alone the fact that you then also have to be the co-driver and have a good enough driver to actually win the race. So therefore, I can only say do this with the group and rotate the wins. If you're going for this trophy and looking for a group, share it in the comments below and help each other out. There's more multiplayer trophies that are all fairly easy and straightforward to do, and you should get the rest of these naturally as you progress through online. Just make sure to focus on a few platinum awards as that can easily be missed. But then again, there are so many platinum rewards now that after all the DLC that's been released, you really shouldn't have to worry too much about this. Oh, and watch out for the oppressor. Of course, there are more trophies in both single player and multiplayer, but most are easy enough to do that you shouldn't need a guide for those. Regarding the DLC and online though, that's a big no thank you for me. I got a few of them naturally when doing various missions and activities, but I can only salute anyone that has gotten those, especially the Doomsday trophies. They are required for the Platinum trophy and can take a lot of time and effort to achieve. So good luck if you're attempting those as well, it could never be me. But anyway, those are the most difficult and time consuming trophies I wanted to go over before GTA 6 drops. A platinum trophy that for me was 10 years in the making, so I hope you too will get the platinum trophy as it is definitely one of the most rewarding platinums anyone can get. And then you can flex this trophy to your friends before GTA 6 finally drops in 2052. I mean, it's all right. This journey to platinum GTA 5 has me extremely curious as to what the platinum requirements for GTA 6 will be. Oh, fuck. So it should be a ton of fun, but in the meantime I think I'm gonna go for the platinum trophies in the definitive trilogy before GTA 6 finally drops. Let me know in the comments if you've already gone the Platinum or where you got stuck. And if you have any other tips, tricks or questions, share them in the comments below. Please like the video as this really does help out and consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. And that's it. See ya. Oh, and Music Lock Radio is the best radio station.